Guys, welcome back. This is Gambler. Welcome. We got a special one once again. We are back on the podcast. We have Yingvi here. What's up, man? Hey, man. All is good. And you? Awesome. No, we're doing great. It's uh, it's Easter. We just happen to be uh, recording on Easter. Uh, how you, how's the fam? How are you guys doing? I'm so lucky my son went out to eat with his mother, so I'm totally free, relaxing at home, playing computer games, you know. Hey, there you go. You're free to allow us to prod you a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. So it, 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 it's kind of up to you. Um, let me turn my audio down just a second, getting loud. Um, how, how did, did you want to do a little, maybe a, a small intro? Um, I've done this in the past. I know mm -hmm. that you've been here a lot longer than I have. And even seeing some of these screenshots that I've seen from Doll and even Dahl's conversations with Doll, you've, I think you've probably been around longer than him. Maybe you've been, maybe you've been Snuggum's best friend um, for 20 years. We don't know, but maybe you want to give a little small intro to your, um, yeah. your uh, Solid Cloud or Starborn. Sure. So yes, Snuggum Zorare is my best friend and we've been friends for 30 years, I think. Wow. See, I, yep. Um, and he started working at Solid Clouds when the game was starting his development, you know, in the yep. very early beginning. Yeah. And he got me to play in the Alpha 1, I think, even, yes. Yeah, that's insane, man. That's See, uh, there's just ignorance. A lot of us come from a place of ignorance until we actually know people's backgrounds and stuff. How 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 was that, get, finding you know, coming on this journey with him, if he was the one that started this game, obviously you tag tagged along. When did you really start getting involved with it? Was it from day one? Yeah, I liked the game. We were very few in the first alphas, you know, there were maybe hundred guys or something, you know, Yeah. if that, and the game was obviously quite different, you know, yep. there was not this harvest mechanism and, and, like the, one of the core features for Starborn is for me is how you use the outpost to harvest stuff and how you place them. The placement of them is so, you know, important. Yeah. That was not part of the game in, in the sense that it is today. Um, and uh, there were a lot of things different. You know, I remember one game in Alpha 2 or something because you used to be able to build a lot of ships and you had them in your hangar. And they defended when you attacked, when you yeah. were attacked, you know. So oh, when the hangers, hangers defended. That was that's an interesting concept. Yeah, that used to be in the Alpha Two or something. Awesome. And and I was competing with Ari as Nukums. We always played together, you know. Yeah. As a team, and um, I had masked up these huge hangers, you know. And then in mid game. Grafted decides to change it so they don't pay, take part in combat anymore. Oh, and I was man. furious. Oh no. <laughs> I went all out out angry with him and because he changed the game mechanism in the middle of the game. But obviously he was right, you know? Yeah. And the game was like alpha one or two or something, so it was not really harmful for like a community or something, like it would be today, you know. So but on a personal level, I was really angry because I had built up these defenses with my hangers all over the place, and I was really active, you know. This was at a time when I, because I had a bad car accident and I couldn't, like, walk or oh, really? work wow. for many, many years, you know. Yeah. So I played a lot, you know. Dude, that, 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 that's crazy. In, the crazy insight, and obviously, like, obviously, Gret here has probably been here the whole time. This is his baby. Um, yeah. other, other people that have been part of this development team, I mean, seven, eight years, I don't know how long it's been seven or eight years. Maybe you have insight. How long has this really been developing for, for people that aren't really knowledgeable, the history of how long alpha was, and then going into beta. So I can only talk from my bad memory. Okay. <laughs> no, you're fine. And yeah. I, and I don't have all the info, but I think it's at least seven years, okay. eight years, even, you know? Yeah. And, and, and this. Yeah. No, go ahead. No, that this process has has just been it's it's been very small baby steps trying to address issues probably as they arise or maybe the real 
like reflection of seeing things that were kind of broken in the game. Yeah, yeah, and it's a small company, you know, in a, when you look at the market and how big these companies usually are, it was a really small company and still is. Yeah. So very few hands doing a lot of stuff. And the game has, of course, developed and changed a whole lot. And 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 what I feel is that it, it has some unique aspects to it that almost no other games have. You know, it, it, which it, also it, makes it really hard to be to play. You get burned out and stuff. You know, it. I th- I think everybody that has been around this game long enough knows. You know, it's a huge investment, a huge investment. Yeah. And if you really want to, I mean, get your build off and running and, and actively play the game. Um, do you, so, so you come in and, and you're pretty much best friends. So was like, how, how did you get to the, to the position that you're in now? I mean, is, is kind of maybe what, I, I mean, people would like to enjoy hearing, you know, cause I don't, okay. I don't necessarily when, or no, like, you know, you know, Snuggums leaves and then you come in when, what was that uh, shift like? Snookers did not leave on the same time that I came in. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what I'm asking. Uh, I don't know these timelines, but I think everybody would be kind of interested in that that phasing in and out. So basically, it's like one and a half year ago. Uh, like I said, I had this car accident. Okay. It did not work for many years. Uh, then my son has leukemia. Oh, okay. Uh, which was really hard, and that took like two, three years of really... You know, painful and hard process. Yeah, it is. It After is very that, painful. you know, things were settling down. Then Gretter offered me this job and like an opportunity. Because when you get out of the working market for many years, you're kind of out of it, you know? Yeah. Trying to so phase back he, in. Yep. Yeah. So he offered me this position in, in Solid Clouds to do some marketing stuff mostly because my background is in marketing. I used to be a marketing director in some big companies in Iceland before I had this car accident, you know? Got it. But got that, it. Was, that, was, that was before. <laughs> that, that's when we advertised in, in newspapers and TV, not on, yeah. not on Google. <laughs> no, so, you're good. No, you're good. Um, no, so it was a huge change to come into this. And, and so basically one and a half year, I came into the company. And I think like four months later or something, now, even more, like a half a year later, uh, Ari gets this offer to take a job in Germany for Game Force. Oh, really? In Germany? Did he? So did he up actually uproot, or is he doing like a remote thing? I know you. I, I'm not trying to get in his personal stuff, but he's your best friend, so obviously it impacts you. Yeah, yeah, it does. We talk a lot. We just talked on on video talk yesterday, for example. But oh, he great. moved his company, uh, his family, I mean, to oh, wow. Uh, Germany. Wow, that's a huge change. Sorry, man. I know, mm. you know, that's your friend. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. I live. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. You know, we everybody has things to do and best for their family and themselves. So obviously, yeah, it's it w- probably a good opportunity for him. It was. It's a big company, and uh, he had, had some ideas for computer games that he's working on. And I, th- I think he's pretty fucking happy, you know. Dude, that's see, it, it. At the end of the day, you know the things that ha- that we say in Discord and the things that we write. Like we're just we're just passionate because you know we want to see the game go in the direction in a positive way. Just like hopefully everybody. At the end of the day, the you know these these things that we say end in the game, and we want to wish the best for everybody. You know, in their personal yeah. lives and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so. If maybe this will be the last one, and maybe we can touch on some of the questions that have come from the community. Um, okay. How have you been enjoying being around the game a lot more? Like, how have you taken on? You know, uh, I know Silly's working remote, and I know I don't know if Branks is working remote or he's out there with you guys. Maybe you could elaborate on the two or three people or the four people that are kind of working on Sovereign. So we have this company, you know, and we have most of the guys are working on the new project. Yeah. But they they assist us in any way we need most of the time. Yeah. So, But the focus is mostly on the new game. Yep. Uh, So to begin with, it was just me, basically. Okay. 
after after I took the game, you could say took it over in a way, like uh, in the beginning of Omega, like uh, one year and three four months ago. Yep. Then we got Silinali in September last year to program the game. Yep. With yeah. So so he she is the programmer and she's been fixing a lot of bugs and actually doing an amazing job with a lot of stuff. Cool. Uh, and then we had Doll with us in some part-time position, but it really wasn't working out because he was on a so different time schedule than us. Yeah, I, I hear that a lot. Of just, it's really difficult to kind of like, even if you wanted to like sit in on each other and chat, and chat, if you're on two different time zones, it's really difficult. You can't do yeah, it. Yeah. So, so that was the reason we had to like change that. You know, yeah, and I hope only hope he's not resentful about it, but there was nothing I could do about it. I had to get a guy with me that I could talk to a lot and and be part of the team because oh, I see see it as a team work, you know do you do you maybe I can just touch on that two seconds. Do you feel like um maybe if if you've ever talked to Gretier or other guys on the team? Do you think there's a place for them to bring in more people? Like if, if somehow this game explodes and you need more people, was the, you know, importing people from other countries, uh, uh, you guys have had time to re- possibly reflect on that. Do you think it's, there's a time and place for that stuff? Or do you just think that you're going to just kind of hire from people that are from EU or it's not that big of a, like they don't, they can work remote basically. So at the moment we are not, we are looking to uh, consolidate what we have, make it a little yeah. bit better, and try to make it grow slowly onwards. Because what we found out like one and a half year was that the game model, like it was 10, 12 weeks, it really did not work. The mm-hmm. game was losing money, to be honest. Yeah. So um, the idea was, and I got that through, to ch- try a different format, you know, look at it like a board game, four week yep. board game where you play a board and then you could do another one after that. So you just jump in and you play a board. And what I tried to do there was to uh, minimize the, the constant need to be online. That was the key factor for me to make the game work because people burn out if they have to come online every 30, 40 minutes or whatever to gather solar flares or rate their neighbors and stuff. Yep. So, so, in, so the key there was to increase passive resource generation, which we have greatly, you know. Oh, it, it is. The, the functionality of the game, I think, as long as people are willing to go look for that information and ask some of us that know how to get these builds and what they need to be looking for, like they the the resource passive resource generation is amazing. Yeah, and and that's the way we want to have it exactly to be able to let like new players have something to do when they come, they get resources, you know. Yeah, and don't need to be online all the time. And that was always the big problem with those older versions of the game. You had to be online a lot to get the active resources to be able to play competitively. Yeah. You know? So now active resources are like a little bit more. They're not, they're not something you should need or rely on to be able to play, you know, successfully, but it should, it can, can help you a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. There, there, there's such, there, there's such a balancing act and, and it I, is. and I mean, I've been around the game long enough to, I've had, I've seen both sides. I've calmed down a little bit over the last year or so. You know, I take my, the reason I, I just, I, I distance myself from things is just to allow, allow, you need to allow yourself to have clear thought and be able to reflect on the things that you've said. And I think at the end of the day, everybody's trying their best. We want a successful game. Definitely. So ho- yep. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I said, we want to have a healthy competitive game where we can get revenue of course to make the game work you know yeah. we gotta pay wages and stuff and we are marketing for each server to fill in with new players and uh, but on the meantime we cannot have it so if you pay something 
you gain too much advantage. So we always yeah. try to balance that as well. It, it, it's really difficult. And at the end of the day, I think everybody needs to realize, and I realize this, it needs to be profitable. You guys aren't going to be able to develop a game that isn't profitable. And so how do Definitely. we fix that? Yeah. And that um, was the problem, you know, that, that was yeah. the big problem and still is because the game is not profitable, that's for sure. But we're, we're getting in a better place with it a little bit, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and some of like, like we'll, we'll transition here a little bit. We've got some really good questions that address exactly what we're talking about. So okay. I'll go over the first one, which I believe this was from, uh, Magus and the discord. Okay. So, so I've, I, I answered his question, but I, I wanted to share and get your opinion on this because he knows my opinion, which is, uh, currently there's no second or third place rewards um, for servers, maybe you can elaborate on why that is. Yeah, the basic thing for me was that players were coming into a game like this map of four or five hundred players playing for four weeks, and very early on they decided this was this one will be the winner. I will take second place, and you will take third place. Yep. So that kind of negates the PvP aspect and the hard competition I want to see in the game. Yep. So that's why we removed it. But we are also bringing back new mechanism very soon, which will, in a way, compensate for that. Do you mind if I bring up Silly had kind of brought in a new concept that might be coming or a feature that coming to the game of, you know, it, it tracks more of what you've done on previous servers? Is that, is that what you're talking about? Or is it maybe something else yeah. that you can't share? I can share that. Uh, the... the, the the way that I want to develop the game, and you've seen that in the channel that I made called Dev Talk. Yeah. I want to talk about it with you. I want to get you guys in for what you think, think, think about this and that. Some are too negative. They're just too negative, and that's annoying, but most are really helpful. Yeah. And there are guys there that have really, really helped us make the game better. You know, like Askarath and you, and more guys that have really been helpful in that channel with discussing new mechanism. So yeah. most of the things we are doing are not a secret. So this thing that I foresee is a ranking system. So you get ranks for each part of the game. You get like, if you're good at doing solar flares, you get points towards the rank there. If you're good at doing missions and every part of the game that is ranked, you can see it in the ranking. In, in game today, you know, the ranking system there we're gonna at the end of the server we're gonna collect those positions of players and hand out points towards a ranked avatar which will be a a, a, a simple basically a military rank shown uh, on your avatar yeah and, it, and it's gonna give a good really good rewards for it so when you go up a rank you're gonna get a really good reward yeah Something that it's better than we're given today, for sure, you know. So, yeah, and... yep, yeah, go ahead. So this will encourage players to compete in every aspect of the game. You know, I want to get points for being top on solar flares or number two or number three. That's, for example, what we're going to give there. So I compete for that. Or I'm going to do most uh, sabotage or I'm going to do most combat, most bombing, etc., etc. So you compete in every category. Yeah. And after the game, you get points, and they mass up towards your rank. You know? And each rank is, of course, harder to get the higher you go. Yeah. Um, I, it, it, it's good to see changes coming or, or um, new features coming that sh like show what people have done. Because I know there's guys that have have played 12 servers, 15 servers, 20 servers or more, and they're like, you know, we really don't, there, there's nothing to really show for that stuff besides maybe badges or maybe a cool avatar, you know, um, the reflection there being that maybe this feature will be able to fix a little bit of that. It will. It will also just show your rank on the map. So you oh, can good. see, okay, this is a, this is a lieutenant. He should be pretty good. Or I see. This is a okay, captain, cool. you know. Yeah. So I think this will increase competition for sure. 
And that's the aim. Always the aim. Have a competitive servers. Yeah, and I think maybe I'll finish up Magus's I- issue was he's like, you know, I'm 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 creating, you know, one or two, possibly three alliances or working with them on each server and they just feel like we already know who the winner is, so why even play? And so I think that that is, I mean, honestly, that's a million dollar question is, I mean, obviously keeping your guys active and trying to stop first place is always um, what we, everybody should be working on is understanding, you know, who's winning and trying to stop them and you win yourself, but maybe there can be some, you know, eventual features that come in that as long as you're active, like for example, you know, they give out, you guys give out rewards for, you know, who's uh, first on the leaderboards, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe we, I mean, there's, there's so many things that we can dive deep on this and try to address, you know, every single problem. We, we know that there's things that, um, you know, need to, uh, be fixed a little bit to try to keep people active, but I feel I, I'm right there with you. I completely agree only having rewards uh, for first. I think it, at least, you know, people, you know, you should be, you should want to play for first. You shouldn't be wanting to play for second. Definitely. And that's always been like some part of Starborn that the strongest guys rock together and play together. You know, I had myself experience like that when I was playing with Admiral and those guys back in the day. You know, I, I just told them I didn't want to play with them. I, I wanted to play against them to have competition. Yeah. And then I did, you know, and won them. You know. <laughs> yeah. It's so, so it, 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 this game has a, a very f- fruitful history, you know. It does. Yeah. Definitely. Wherever, wherever that was a great, that was actually a great game, you know, because they were really strong and they played together in this. Then we had coalitions, you know. Yep. But we managed to, uh, I had like, Three, four guys with me, with me that knew the game, and then I got a lot of newbies, and I just taught them to play, and we went on to win the game. That's great. Was, what? What? Or, do you remember what alpha that was? No, I remember there was some interview with um, Adviral on on our Facebook. He remembered it. I don't. Uh, oh, okay. Alpha eight, maybe. Okay. Maybe eight. And he <sighs> talked about it there and remembered it. I don't. Got you. But maybe a little bit a little bit before my time i came in at the end of eight but uh i'm just i'm just more curious hearing the hearing the the winds <laughs> yeah but to continue with this this that this new system will exactly do that if you have if your alliance wins the server then each member of that alliance get most points you know okay let's uh, the numbers are not like totally decided yet but let's say i think it's about 20 points for each member of that alliance then the second place alliance each member gets 20 12 points got you and so on and then you get a different amount of points for where you end in the ranking overall and then we take out different categories as well so the aim is there to have competition in all categories and also on the alliance level Cool. So if so, you go second, you get something for it. You get your rank yeah. up and you get good rewards for it. Yeah, that's great. Is is I touched on badges. Is is this a system that you guys are dabbling in at all? Or is badges um more tied to future like frontiers? Or are, are we gonna see more badges for uh sovereign? I I just don't know. Uh oh, we okay. have not decided on that. We we okay. have this system in in at the moment for me personally when i play and i think many have the same view is patches are something you're not really using that much i think like having a ranked avatar where your rank is shown on your avatar all the time that will yeah. be more valuable oh it is you know? i'm just i'm I, i'm i guess the reason i bring badges up is because there's only really so many ways to show you know what what you've done in the game and right now it's badges pretty much and maybe yeah. some avatars. Like we have the avatars from Alpha 8. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to continue with that, of course. So the ranking system is just like an added thing. Yeah. You know? No, it's another layer, which is great. I think it's all good yeah. progression. I just, I was just seeing if um, this ranking system, you know, tied in with that or not. Uh, no, it doesn't tie into it. But it's going to be more automatic when we complete the ranking system, which has taken some time. 
it's a lot of API work and stuff. So when that's completed, it's also going to help us hand out the rewards, the patches and so on automatically. That's great. I think that yeah. one of the other criticisms I saw recently was, you know, um, and, and I, I, I get it. You have a very small team and I, I, I'm, I'm just looking for, you know, trying to win a server. I'm not, I mean, I, me personally rewards are just kind of like an afterthought. It's just more of the experience itself. But some people have said, you know, you know, why does it take so long to get these rewards? So I guess if there's a system in place that does it automatically, that will be uh, very helpful is another yeah. uh, question I saw. Yeah, that's the aim because it's like a really annoying, not <laughs> maybe not annoying, but it's like something that just one guy can do at the moment, and he's working in the other department, not yep. with me, basically. So we're gonna try to take that over to us and do it automatically. Yeah, that's great. I, I know you guys are working hard, and you guys can only do so many things at once. Yeah, we uh, we have a schedule going forward, so we're trying to finish each point on it. You know. Um, I have, so this question was from controller and this is actually a really good question that I've thought about myself, which is, yeah. is there any way that, you know, either through backdoor channels or DMS or, or you, maybe you can t elaborate this uh, here. You don't have to answer this, but imagine we have the ability to pay for servers before they even go live. So we know that the server is paid for and then we can just run like whatever, like if a server costs this much to run it for four weeks, if a server costs this much to work to run it for five weeks, and then you guys can still have the store. And then we just know like, Hey, we know we can go and buy a 12 week server and it gets ran for some kind of long tournament is, is this, so I'm going to read this. So is server costs, uh, paying uh, for them beforehand and then just running the store along with them. Is there ways to do that? Do, is there a conversation that we can have about that? We can always have a conversation, my friend. No problem. Okay. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm open to many things. So we could just discuss this at some point and how we would make yeah. it happen, you know, but on a personal level, those 12 week servers are not appealing. And I think yeah, this yeah. is just uh, something that's like there was some discussion like last week on Discord about this, and someone was saying that most of the community wants those, but there were just eighty six guys that answered yes. Yeah, it ain't much, you know. I think the game is much healthier when it's more competitive and more people are playing on it for a shorter time. Yeah, that's my no, opinion. You know. Yeah, no, I I, I completely agree. I, I I don't know how. Uh, how many people would honestly want to sit there for 12 weeks? I think yeah. maybe, uh, and I, I'm right in the middle. I think eight, you could do one for eight weeks if like, and I'm not, I'm not bringing this up. We don't have to address this, but if somehow we had the alpha nine map, which was way bigger and just see yeah. how many people actually spawned in, even if only three or four of the sectors had a team in them, you're still going after objectives. Just make the win condition, you know, like a hundred GTs, you know, I, th there's a, there's the perfect world for balancing that, that map. But my, I guess controllers question and my question was if we knew beforehand, how much these servers cost did to run a five week or possibly like an eight week server, you know, we could pay them for them beforehand and then we can just run tournaments whenever we wanted. Yeah. Let's have that discussion. You know, I'm not closing any doors. Yeah. But uh, my worst experience in, in Starborn over the years has always been when we had long servers. It had thinned out. There were maybe 5,000 players in the beginning. Then we had like 50 guys for the yeah. last three, four weeks. And we were just playing to compete, uh, complete, you know, yeah. not to compete, exactly. Just to yeah. complete and just going in because you didn't want to leave your alliance. And there was no no fun basically it was just yeah it's like in you know, in the two seconds here is like imagine we do run the eight the nine or alpha nine map and it takes 11 weeks when it when it was over after three so it's yeah. it's you know and that, that's what we were what we ran into back then and it's the same yeah. thing and that's yeah. that's why like 
Um, the 72 hour thing is great being able to just have that unlocked on a more condensed map. So when you do got the snowball, it just finishes itself. Yeah, we, we would have to do that, I think, as well. And yeah, let's just have this a little bit open. I'm not like commenting. Yeah. No, that's and, great. And no, that, that's that's the best answer I think we could have is is ha being able to have that conversation. So that, that's really good. I mean, uh, that yeah. kind of addressed it. So controller, there you go, buddy. Uh, let, let's uh, start talking about it. Um, and then this was the last one from Hugo. He said, do other devs play Sovereign? And... Uh, what has been their reflection of all four of the maps in circulation? Uh, so the current team is just very small. You know, like I said, it's just me, Silly, and Branks. Yeah. And Branks is basically doing what Dahl did. He's like a part-time job. Yeah. Uh, I think we have all played, at least me and Silly have played those maps, you know. Um, rest of the development team has not played it. They played back in the day, you know, years ago. Yeah. So I try to play each map to get the feeling of it and how it is because I make them personally. Yep. Um, I, I think Crossfire is the best one. Oh, a hundred percent. Um, yeah. the, that's why we, I mean, I was very I, you know, I got forced back into it, but I had a great time when I was able, like I was working the first like nine days of the tournament and playing, I just ended up playing Gatos, but I thought that the map was designed amazing. Uh, I think that yeah. you have, um, it's your labor, like the different, different positions on the map to take labor, different positions on the map that have the objectives. They're not all just condensed in one area. So you have fob play, you have fronts, you have the ability to, to warp around fronts. I think it's a really, really extremely good and balanced map. Yeah, and that was the aim with that map. Then we have another maps that have different aims, you know, like the newest map that's called Equilibrium. That's basically, I have no ice, special ice areas in it. Yeah. So you can just spawn and you can go out to, a, to, to the galaxy and you can find your spot and build up like a hop. You have ice, you have mining colonies, you have mining facilities. Heavy ship assemblies all in the same area. Yeah. And then we have gravity, where you basically, we gravitate towards the center, and that's the focal point. You know? Yep. And then we have event horizon, where you start in the center and go from there. So they yeah. all have like a different play to them. And that's, I think that's really important. It is. I, I, think, some... I, I think the rotation is great. I, I think that being able to diversify player experience and not just feel like they're trying to tune just one map every single time is great. Yeah. So that's the thing. And I'm like still thinking about what could I do as the first, fifth one. I don't have any clear idea in my head at the moment, you know? Yeah. So I guess that, I really... that answers that question. You guys, there's the door still open to um, doing other things. I, I I, I wanted to elaborate th on this. So the concept back in Dissidents, you had those little islands. Have you ever thought about designing maps like that again, just to a smaller scale? You know, with the little islands in the middle that had the really good HS or HSA positions, the the moon positions, maybe ice positions. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be open to. I, I'm open to any ideas about the map, guys, and I can just you can ping me and have. Bring it up in a discussion, no problem. Uh, I think I actually have those kind of ideas in uh, in um, gravity, where you yeah. have those really good heavy ship assembly spots and then nothing else around them. So you have to sacrifice your resource there. You don't get many resources, but you get the best heavy ship assembly stock spot instead. You know. So. Yeah, like I said, I'm I'm open to any ideas about map making and and I will try to re-roll them more regularly now because I made the the basic structure of them differently, so I can re-roll them so they don't appear exactly the same, but the overall yeah. layout is the same, you know. Yep, the randomness of the planets would be cool. Of them, where the yeah. maybe not the moon. I mean, the moons are kind of hard to control. You don't want some kind of if i don't know if it's a script or whatever it is and then it randomly puts down like an eight or nine point moon somewhere and it just breaks the, the server or something you know you don't want that but 
No, we don't want that. And that's yeah. something <laughs> no. we really have to look for, you know. No, I do. I, I don't want to be the guy that, like, if if you have this thing in place, you got to, like, the one guy that's put in charge of randomly scanning the map and making sure that, that none, of the, none of the moons spawned the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. Prance has been doing that for me lately. And <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, ah, I see. To... Okay. A little, yeah. a little hazing, to... a little bit. He's checking the maps I'm making. <laughs> yeah. I think he's actually making one himself as well. Oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, since I've got you, I can, I, I'm going to prod you one time and then I'll leave you alone and then we'll get into uh, other stuff. What, what is your, uh, you, you, you just covered this earlier. Um, my, my big thing that I really see, you talk about marketing. What, what is the, uh, conversation we could have about possibly getting the YouTube uh, more active or, I mean, I know I've seen Facebook. I went on Facebook that the Facebook's cool seeing the posts for the servers, but I feel like that there's a lot more uh, we could be doing with the YouTube. Do you have any uh, ideas? I think what I would like to do that is to have the community work with me there. Yeah. What, what would and... your ideas be? Like, if you want to connect to our official YouTube channel, we could work that out, you know? Yeah. And make content. And if, like, guys for Marcus wants to make a new player video with his new guys, we can connect to that and so on, you know? Is 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 the discussion more like, do we need to have this, like, in the community chat? Or do you want to be, like, DMs? Or do we want to, like, you know, because cause I, I really truly feel like, you know, um, since, I mean, I'm getting way better at being able to have conversations, um, and, and, you know, try to teach people the game, do builds, mm -hmm. all that good stuff. Um, and I know other people have been interested in doing it as well. How, how do we have that conversation? Do they need to be part of the community team or do they just need to like do it in dev talk? Where do we, where do you want to have those conversations at? So. I think we just need to talk about it both in DevTalk and DMs, and I need to figure out what options I have. I don't have an option, for example, to create a video or create a lot of content there because I yeah. don't have have, have uh, resources to do it. You know, I but but I think that like it doesn't. I think when people think of YouTube and then they think of content, like. I would think, and that this would be going like back to this idea of that this would overlay with the round table talks. Like even if it was just you, like mm -hmm. on the end, at the end of the day on Friday, like even once a month and just being like, Hey, make like an official post on Facebook, Twitter, on YouTube or whatever. And be like, Hey, this is something we're new. We're going to start doing, even if it's a 20 minute talk, you have one of us here that can record it. We put it on the official and that can be, you know, a phase of getting the YouTube, you know, um, releasing content for the game. I think any, any interest is better than, you know, no video, you know, for six months. Yeah, I agree. And I like this idea. So we can just work on it. Together. Yeah. No, it's good. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to, I told you I was prodding you for two seconds. You don't got to listen to me, but no uh, problem. Uh, no. We can even do it something like we can go a little bit over how the month was played, you know, yeah. who won the servers. Do and the server what stuff, thinking, yes. Yeah, and then what we're thinking about... How the doing, how the uh, maps went, what, you know, how playable were they, or how bust, you know, what was what felt like it needed to be addressed, you know, all that good stuff. Yeah, it would be great to get, like, Lack Aventure with us somehow, because he's been doing a great job. And he has a lot of information about what's happening on the server, and he is just an awesome guy to have in a community. Who, who lag? Lag Avenger. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. I, I, yeah. You know, back when before they gave him his news channel, I was talking to him for like two seconds. I'm like, dude, all this, this, this is something that needs its own channel and needs to be locked down. And I told him, I'm like, hey, if if this stuff is going to be going 
you know, just getting covered up in the server channels, you can at least, you know, publish them in, in my discord just so I have them. I, cause he put so much time into those and now fast forward, you know, he does the news, which was amazing. I think, yeah. I think you could easily create some content with him, give him some kind of like monthly um, news or every two weeks because servers are, you know, uh, ending every two weeks or so have, you know, even if it's like myself and him or if it's controller and him or whoever, and then make a video about it and then post it on the, the YouTube, just going over the news and how, who won the server, how it happened. He's been, um, documenting all that stuff. I think it's great. Yeah. I think this is something that we should do and we could have part of it like me or silly or, Brian yeah. could come also and talk about what we're doing in, in development, what we're yep. working on a little bit. And Anytime you can reflect and get some player feedback on like how the server went, what was, what did we run into any bugs? What were issues or what worked, worked, worked really well. You can make a small 10, 15 minute video and then put it on the, on your guys's YouTube. And I think it would be really, really healthy for the game. Yeah, let's do it. And that, that's one of the big, big bonuses with Starborn. Even though the community was a lot bigger, you know, yeah. when when most were paying for free and the game was not mm -hmm. really working for us in a way, you know. Yeah, we yeah, had think... this fewer persons, but very committed and very knowledgeable about the game and active. And and I, I want to support them and you guys in doing stuff for the game, whatever yeah, you, not... you know. And and I'm just gonna say this for two seconds. I know you guys live this game every day. You guys come in and you live this game, and you guys are developing this game. And hopefully, a lot of people are gonna see this video and just be able to have per some some perspective. You know, yes. I know I'm probably one of the the number one guys that criticize this game, and there's reasons why I leave the Discord sometimes. Just you know. Sometimes you just mm -hmm. need to reflect and take a break, you know, yeah, and so, yeah. um, and let other people breathe. So at the end of the day, we're all trying our best. And like right here, this podcast is a really good example of trying to get these ideas out here and going in positive ones. So yeah. And criticism is good. That's why I had this channel open dev talk. I want yeah. to talk about the game. I want to see what, you know, you guys want to improve it and what you can do better and so on. It, you know, yeah, and some guys are just too negative, but that's very few. Um, most most of them are really helpful, and it's good for the game. I I once again, I think there's a time and place, and I think this change is amazing. When you put that, I'm I've said this for a long time. These this dev chat needs slow mode. We need to be able to process these good ideas, and they don't yeah. need to be lost with just a handful of people that you know, just bombard these, that, that channel for reflection. There's some really good ideas that get lost in translation. Definitely. And that's been a problem mostly lately, you know? Yeah. With yep, some guys handing us like a wall of text. No, there, and there's know. nothing wrong. I can, I can, I can talk shit to Magnet because I know he can take it. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, it's really good sometimes to go and read back through some of your ideas and then just make some topic points and just leave them, you know, condense your information, leave them there and just see what other people think about them. Yeah, and also like we're doing now, we are doing this balance changes and I, uh, we, we go over it with the team, you know, and then we talk about him in the dev talk, what we're going to do and why we are doing it. Yep. So we get your insight on 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 your or your feelings on how it is and what could work and maybe change something that we plan to do but you guys thought was even better in another way, you know? I I think you do a good job. There's been times where I've I've woken up and I see I'm tagged in something or everybody's tagged in something and you see what you're focusing on for that week, right? Like if you're like okay, we're trying to unpack how do we balance the building tiers? So like yeah. the, the only thing we're really focused on is this. How do we fix this? And then just we can, as the community, be able to just hone in on that one idea because everybody yeah. has a thousand good ideas, 
but we don't have a thousand developers. So definitely. And some are doable, some are just not doable, you know? Yeah. Some are good and some are bad. And yeah. Now now we finish this phase with uh balance changes. Next week we're gonna talk more about upcoming faction changes, sabotage, yeah, something like that. That 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 was right on to my next point I was gonna make. What you we've you've seen this discussion a couple of times. What do you think we should I understand you made this point earlier about having good passive re resource generation, mm -hmm. but there's still a, I feel nobody should just be able to be on one mining colony and have like nine HSAs and just sit there for a server and have a, th a million frigates there. I think that there needs to be, I mean, what do you think needs to happen with MPL? So or if anything, it's always about the balance, you know, yeah, MPL has been really strong and powerful, but we did not want to nerve that directly. Yeah. So what we did instead, and and there's one point that people forget about MPL, and that's they can only have one military policy in their wildcard slot. Yep. So, for example, we decided to upgrade the military policies. Yeah. Now, now they are far stronger, and MPL doesn't have access to them. Yep. So that's one point. We also saw that many were using um, New Horizon with their big station, so we nerved that a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you get a minus 5% multiplayer on your old, st every hex you own when you have that build, you know, Yeah. in that station. So those balance changes were aimed to make the other factions and other, yeah, other factions basically a little bit better. To get them yeah. up to up a level towards MPL, you know. And and what's funny is like I don't know off the top of my head what do they get fifteen percent passive? Is that what it is? Yes. So do you do you feel like but do you do you I mean this I'm not gonna prod you any more than I have to. It's do you feel like that that's a healthy or do you think that like I feel like the trading port is enough? Like I think that that, that ability because because your your trading port gets two range and then you can stream all of that doubled. So you're talking like f you could possibly stream stream five thousand metal to your CSA from that from any station on the map. I just feel like that the trading port at two range is strong enough. Maybe even if you crushed uh, passive resource generation down to five, I don't know. I, I just feel well, like M MPL is so busted already. First off, you can prod me all you want. Yeah, no problem. Okay. Yeah. Secondly, I think MPL is strong. It has always been strong. Uh, but like the trading port, there is, you know, when you have MPL trading port, it doesn't harvest as much pair hex, but it gets yeah. more hexes, you know? Um, and like I said before, you don't get the military policies, which are really powerful and can really True. swing yeah. those big battles. But but if you look at the faction itself, it's getting a huge buff defensively. So I think that, I think, I mean, obviously some people are obviously fighting with MPL, but if you're, if all of a sudden you just run into, I mean, obviously, okay, it's promoting the game. It's a really strong build. You guys, I mean, we want people buying some of the factions. I think it's great. I think it's great for the game to support the game. Go buy the faction. But yeah. I feel like, when somebody can just log in one or two times a day and have infinite frigates pretty much. And I know other builds can do that. If I'm a, if I know how to build stuff, I'm going to be able to do that too as Zayok or any other faction. But I yeah. just feel like they, they're so strong defensively and being able to have, you know, basically no resource issues. I think that that's what people's problem is, is like, I don't even have to flare. I don't even have to raid and I get as many frigates as I want. So, like I said, we're doing those balance changes, and they were both aimed at, uh, yeah, fixing the tires a little bit around, so they would make, yeah. for example, early sabotage more viable, yeah, uh, early rush build not so strong, so you have to go to tire three to get those we, frackets, we, you know. We hit the head on the, I think the gun po policy, even getting it lower would be amazing. How many times I've 
like day five or day six, like I want to try to bomb something, but I can't. I've got four or five stacks of destroyers, but being able to bring that gunboat uh, diplomacy down is is amazing. I mean, this that would op honestly open up. So th I want to I want to share this build for two seconds. The he so the only way that you get that stat from gunboat is having a heavy, and the only two heavies that it affects. Well, three, but the two that you can build the fastest is the destroyer and the frigate. That yeah. that that niche build, even if you were to like go like if, if Gatos Fritos affected how fast you could build destroyers, you could have this bomber destroyer gunboat policy build way early on, and you could that would that would strengthen the accessibility and people wanting to build destroyers in the first place. So I don't know. I think it opens up doors with that adjustment too. I think gunboat diplomacy should be like even lower, but that's just my opinion. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. I have a thought on it and I disagree with you. Oh yeah. And okay. I can tell you why. So basically the game is like, you know, complex. We have these different mechanisms and bombing is one of them. Mm -hmm. And when you bump a player stations away, you're basically destroying what he's worked for. Yeah. You know, and that's a huge step. It is. Yeah. So if you're like a new guy or not as good as the other guy and he gets up to really fast snowballing and he gets bombing you on day five or whatever, yeah, it's really not positive for the game. True. I, 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 I completely understand. And I agree. I agree. Yeah. I, I'm unfor Unfortunately, my thinking is coming from three years of experience and what I need as a leader. I'm not looking yeah. at it from the new player perspective, which that is true. You don't want it's to slaughter yeah. everybody else that isn't as good as you. Yeah, that's the thing. But we don't just, uh, for me, it should always be hard to destroy other player stations. It should be something you have to work for. You, yeah. you should be able to do it, but not too easily. Yeah. So this is like in most parts of this game, it's a balancing act. True. And then that that's right up there with it. Like I said, yeah, I definitely. I look at it, my perspective is is looking at it, you know, playing solo versus a team of sixteen, not like brand new to the game and I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And same goes for like sabotage. That's a unique feature. It is. You cannot yeah. defend against against it unless you have your you sabotage can't. or someone else doing it. <laughs> so we need to have that in balance as well. It is. You cannot and be too I, powerful. I can... Yep, I completely agree with you. The sabotage is an issue. If you're not doing it, you are screwed if you're parked right next to somebody that is. Yeah. So it, that needs to be balanced in that retrospect. And we need to have bombing, sabotage, and all that balanced so it can be done, but not too easily. True. And it's and once again, it's a, bal it's a huge balancing act. It's like, mm -hmm. if you make the HP values really high, do you reduced how much you know firepower that scouts and recons do it's really really tough yeah and yep. we're always like this gatos changes you've been seeing over like the one and a half year now we took away ship sharing uh gatos suffered a lot because they used to be fat corvettes you know yeah so we increased the production rate on them and now they were getting a little bit annoying so now we increased the the cost it, it it's very interesting because this once again goes back to that like the handful of us that have really loud voices like what's our agenda and i feel like you know some of these other really good ideas that might be the opposite opinions of these same ideas get lost and i can tell you like if if like like like, like th and this is why i think it's interesting to to if we could get these like community round tables back is like it would at least some of these guys would have a voice being able to volunteer and be like hey you know i had no i i, I really want to get this idea out and they can go you know full force with what gatos needs or how to fix mpl or you know if they have an idea about bombing you know yeah and i think we should do it in conjunction with what you spoke about earlier with content so yeah. we could do it like lack Aventure, if he's up for it, goes over how the game has been played, how who yeah. won this and that. Then we go over what we're doing in development and also questions. Like basically you did now. You yep. asked me questions from some guys. Yep. 
we can do it in that way. Yeah. I think that's a good medium to do it. You know, a really good format. Um, people actually have the agenda in front of them, so they know how yeah. the round table is going to go, and like who has access to actually talk. Because there's nothing more annoying than having a hundred people with open mics. So maybe Oof. at the end, we could you know have like like allow people to switch or you know channels if they want to say something and you know one of us hops over or whatever that's actually doing the recording so we can get some of these ideas out but yeah i i completely agree i think there's a healthy way and and change that we could do this com the, the the round table is amazing and even if it only happens once a month i think it's better than none yeah this could be the first step today yeah Dude, that's great. You know, I, I'm right there with you. I'm not. I won't. I won't keep prodding you on it anymore. I know that. You know. I just. I. I. I feel like, and I, a lot of people. Other. We just. I. I just want to see. Man, if uh, it's just like I, I'm like sitting here begging, being like, man, just give me the YouTube for like two months, and I'll. And, and we'll. I, I. It doesn't have to be my content. Like I'm just gonna like put controller to work and some other people to work to actually make some damn content. And okay. play some builds with me, and I can, we can like I can have somebody come on to test and fight me, just to show some what some of these builds can do, you know? Okay, yeah. I can. I, I'm going to discuss it with my team, even yeah. though I can make the decision, but I w would like their input on it. Yeah. So let's get back on that after the holidays. Yeah, that's great. I think it's it's very positive, and I think it would it would do a lot for interest in the game. Because I can yeah. tell you, I live and die by YouTube, and I know a lot of other people do too. Um, I don't. I'm, yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is what I'm talking about. We're talking about, um, like, your, um, like, community that you live in, like, the things that you take, like, how you access information. And mm -hmm. a lot of the states, a lot of us access, we live and die by Twitch and YouTube and some people do Reddit. And if we don't like even like, you know, uh, Twitter and Facebook, not so much, but I understand yeah. the social media aspect of it. But I think that this could do wonders for, for the game. Yeah, I'm, I like this idea and I think we should work on it. You cool. know, maybe you want to hear a little bit about what we are planning, what's on the docket for us, you know, for, for the foreseeable future. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so basically, we are going to finish those ranking system. That's been a priority for me now for some time. Um, alongside that, we're going to do some faction changes. Oh, good. And changes. Yeah, we're going to change the factions a little bit. Uh, we're going to discuss that in the development channel in the next next week or so. That's great. Yeah, we have some ideas of how to like change repairs on outposts and how oh, sabotage locks down stations and and how spying works as well a little bit and some changes to the factions themselves good and we're going to discuss that in the dev channel that's then great we have also some thinking about changing how uh, victory points work so instead of just collecting them all in the end of the game they would be like a cumulative thing. So you get a victory point on day seven. It starts to take point in for you every day. Yep. But in That's the a end, healthy, healthy change. Yeah, I think so. And in the end, they will give a large chunk of points to offset it. So a little bit, so you can still come back and back. win a game where you're yep. behind on, you know? Yeah. Like week one, they're worth one week two, they're worth two week three, they're worth three. Stuff like no, that. not not like that at the moment, though. That's not even a bad idea as well. But basically, they count for one point. But in the end, at the very end, when the server is made up, you know. Yeah, maybe they have like they a set value, like, like five or something. Or, yeah. Yeah, some some issue, some number we have to decide, like maybe five, seven, eight points or whatever. Yeah. So you know you can still win the game if you have a comeback. You know. True, and that's a good so conversation that, to have. Like, if it's if you have eight, if there's, if there's 24 points, and you have eight of them up until the third week, that's 28 points. But then all of a sudden, if, if somebody gets 40 points for having seven, it doesn't, math doesn't work out. So, you know, 
But yeah. that I think yeah. it's a really good I think it's a really good idea to have that discussion of what those values should be. Yeah, and we will do that when the time comes. That's yeah. maybe uh, in one two months or something. I don't know. Good. Depends. This kind of good Depends. outlook. I'll uh, I'm taking notes right now. So at the end of this video and then in the Discord, I'll just kind of if you if like make a post about like these upcoming things that are that are coming down the pike line, which is great. Yeah, we are also adding some tutorials to the game. Cool. Uh, basically, they pop up on certain uh, occasions, like when your station reaches level three, there will come a small thing tutorial for new player. Do this, you get this. Oh, good. You know? Yep. When, when you get attacked for the first time, you get up a tutorial that shows here okay. you can build a, a, That's a good. missile Those battery. Are good. That's a good idea. So, yeah. So even ones for like a troop carrier. If you queue up a troop carrier. You get a you get a menu that pops up showing you what the hell to do with it. <laughs> exactly, but that's a good idea. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, but uh, all all those little things that you need to learn to do because Starbone is really complex. We know that it is. Yep, it is, and that's what makes it so good. Yeah, these you are know. great ideas. Those are good changes. Yeah, um, we also maybe look into how rating works. There used to be a problem with players rating uh, nearby stations or their friends and family basically yeah but that has not been so much of a problem lately or you just don't hear about it like i mean I, i'm not going to get in it and dive deep once again say it for like the 10th time you know issues that we've seen in the past but um i i, I just i i don't know uh i think any I, I think the whole community is open to trying to fix, you know, if, um, you know, how, what to do with raiding. Um, if it should just be like, you can't raid your Alliance members, you know, whatever you want to do with it. I, I, I'm just an instrument of chaos. Like I want to be able to like, you know, it's like never change how, you know, uh, raiding your teammates stations or assaulting your teammates stations. You know, it's all, it's all part of, uh, different strategies. Yeah. Yeah, we, we are looking into it. We have to come up with uh, the best solution, of course, and we will have that discussion in our channel when the time comes. Good. Okay, so we got rating. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, that's, like, that's like six or seven different things coming down the, the tubes. Yeah, that's what we're thinking about doing, you know. Um, yeah, that's about it, I think, for now. We have some longer-term things to look at, but first and foremost, we need to... Uh, get players to know the game better when they start playing it, the new players. And we've been working on that. We made this tutorial, which is really short and to the point. Good. You know, and then we made the wiki, which I yep. think is really good. Yep. Uh, but still, we need to improve a little bit better on the, teaching the players, new yep. players. I completely agree. Um, yeah. And I think what... Like I said, my two seconds is um, just, I think you'd like, I know at least, you know, US players. I mean, if, if somehow we can get into a better routine of, uh, you know, with, like we said, the, the, the round table or tutorials or even conversations that get posted on the, on the, the official would be yeah. do a lot of work. I'm telling you like so much yeah. work for this. So I think it's great. I appreciate um, you like your willingness to agree and, and, you know, we're all in this together, you know, that's my view on it. You know that. Yeah. I, I'm um, basically a player. I played this game. Oh, you've played more than me. I mean, yeah. you've, you played more than me during beta. So, uh, it's just, you know, some, like my job doesn't let me play this game. <laughs> I can only play this game during the winter time. So. Yeah. But um, did, is there anything else? You, so that was kind of like that. What we just went over was kind of like the next one or two months of changes that could be coming up soon that we are going to have discussions about. Is there anything else that you wanted to share or any other ideas that um, you haven't, you know, that might be news to us? Not really. Uh, I think we just about covered it all. We just over an hour and I think we're pretty good. That's awesome. Any, no. Anything that you possibly want to, you know, you have the open mic. Anything, you can yell at me, you can do whatever you want. I just want to say that uh, the community is awesome. 
but some are too negative and we need to be more positive as yeah. a group. You know, we are all trying to make the game work because there are a few things. It needs to, we cannot spend money on it all the time without getting anything back. Yeah. So no, that's that is, one yeah. of the issues that players understandably don't see, but it is an issue we have to address and we are doing that. But on the same time, we don't want to have players getting too much advantage. So we're always trying to balance that. Yeah. Um, all the changes we make all the time is to try to make the game better. Yeah. And that's also why we discuss them with you. Oh, yeah. No, you, you do, guys do a good job of... of, of... I think, I think um, Branks does a good job. Silly does a decent job. You do a really good job of communicating like almost daily, like at least during the work week of yeah. what you guys are working on that day. And I think that the, the more of that, and I would even go as far as, I don't know if you guys are voice comm shy or maybe um, your boss doesn't want you to do it, but I know Hugo sits in those um, voice channels all the time. And I always have Discord open, and I'm always at home. So if you guys ever want to poke in into the voice comms, I guarantee you some people will jump in there and at least say hi. Okay. Yeah, that would be my only thing I would suggest. Um, okay. I think that you could really generate and get more interaction with at least a handful of people. Because right now, like, one, one player might, you know, 10 people, 20 people, 100 people might mean the difference. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I want to say, I think in the course and over the course of Omega, we've been slowly going in the right direction. Yeah, I agree. It, yeah, the game is more competitive in most ways. It has more lively maps. It's basically not dying in after a week or two. Most maps, but not all. Sometimes we have few really good and active players playing each map, and and my aim with the ranking system is to fix that a little bit. Yeah, you know. and and I agree with you. I think that Crossfire and EH are your two stronger maps. And if you didn't watch the video I just made, Gravity, like, that's a tournament map, dude. Like, that's a tournament, go mid and slaughter each other mid. Like, you can't even play solo on that, on that, on that map. Yeah, yeah. So, and you can play it every eight weeks, you know. Yeah, it's, no, I, yeah. It's, it's a good, you know? it is, it's a very niche map. And if that was the purpose, then th that's a good thing. And that was the purpose. Like I said, all the maps should be different and yeah. offer a different play style. Good. Yeah, all right, man. Well, this has been awesome. Um, is uh, anything else you want to, or maybe I'll prod you a little bit and then we can wrap it up. Yeah, nothing else. I'm just, I hope you all stay with us and we try to make this a better game for everyone, you know? Yeah, don't don't worry about me. I'll always be here. It's just some um, unfortunately, you know, I, I work a lot during the summertime, so I'm not really here. But um like again, um I'm gonna document some of this stuff and write it up and then uh, we'll get this video out. And then if this is like the first step to, you know, a round table and all that stuff, we I mean, I'm telling you, like your di your Discord and the 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 social media stuff is how you connect with all of us and I and there's nothing wrong with tagging everybody. I don't I could I could care less if you tag me every day in some kind of like an ever like you tag everybody just updates what's going yeah. on, talking to each other, jumping in voice, it all helps. Okay, and we just work on that together. You know, I like this idea you had and and we will just work on it. Yeah, that's you know? great. All right, man. Well, this has been awesome. Thanks for uh Thanks for jumping in. And my, my last comment is, you know, even if we do this a month from now or two months from now, I, I've wanted, I, I said this to Silly and I said it to Sai, you know, I want it to be where it didn't, it's just, this doesn't have to be my thing, but just jumping in and doing videos like this and we'll get the webcams going and all that stuff and, and get the, you know, audio perfect, webcams perfect. People want to see, you know, connect with you, see you, talk to you and hear about at least maybe a five minute, 10 minute videos about updates that are coming to the game. And I think getting with lag, I think it's a really good idea. Yeah, I think so. We will just do this, I think. And uh, we'll just uh, maybe next week talk more about it. Dude, it is. It's great. Thanks for, thanks for being here. 
Uh, happy Easter, man. Uh, and Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. It's been great. We, uh, we can do this we, again soon. We talk later. All right, man. Uh, Bye. All right, guys. Uh, Bye. Appreciate you guys. Uh, thanks, Yingy, for, Yingy for being here. And uh, until next time, guys, peace out. Later. Later.